The 2014 Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship in association with Bing Digital, Walkworth Consulting and Bianco Auto Development. Hello and welcome to Last Lap. Now this time out we're at Rockingham, one of the most individual circuits out there with the banking section and that very tight intricate complex too. Now we're here for the Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championships and before the race I caught up with some of the drivers. Okay, we're here for the build up then. James, you could take the championships this weekend. What have you got to do? Uh, well, we've got to beat James Ford, quite simply. Um, he's on he, ahead of me on the grid uh, for, for today's race, so a little bit of work to do, but hopefully we can get him. And he's your teammate as well, so that adds that extra dimension, doesn't it? Uh, yes. It, it, I mean, we, we get on pretty well. Uh, we're fierce rivals. There's nothing more than that. So uh, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty difficult in the paddock afterwards when we've uh, had a bit of a battery. <laughs> we were right. It's not bad. And how's the car behaving at the moment for you? The car's fine. Yeah, it's been great all year. Bianca do a great job on all the, all the cars at the front of this grid, and uh, we're lucky to be one of them. And you've got the pressure on them for you for this race, and uh, Rockingham is a, is a hard circuit at best of times, especially with the camber there. Yeah, Rockingham is okay for us normally, we've done pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, it's good for James as well, so it's, uh, it's not going to be an easy race, but uh, we'll take it as it comes. Yeah, and uh, over the season then, you had a pretty good season obviously to be where you are in the championship, so uh, overall, when you look back, are you going to be uh, feeling quite happy or sad? I suppose it all depends on what happens today. Yeah, I mean, we've got two more races after this at Silverstone as well, so we're in quite a good position with, with drop scores that we have to run in this championship. We don't have to do it today, uh, but we finished in the top three in class in every race this season so far, so if we come second to, to James, then it's been a pretty good season. It would be nice to finish on a high though today, wouldn't it, so you know Silverstone you can go and have a play? Yeah, and Silverstone's our home circuit as well, so if we can take all the, all the sponsors and all the family and friends along to, to a race that we, the pressure's off of, then uh, it, should be, uh, it should be a nice weekend. Well, thank you for speaking to us. Get in the car, get ready, and good luck. Thanks, Bryn. Well, Graham, you've got one of the fastest cars out there, so you should be mixing it with the front runners. What are your hopes? Uh, I hope to be mixing it with the front runners, yeah. I'm uh, starting in uh, position 9 or 10. I had a problem yesterday. Uh, it was a loose nut behind the wheel, uh, caused a problem. And, uh, <laughs> and, and we went off, so yeah, hence qualifying 9. So looking forward to getting a clean start, hopefully not mess up the E guys. And, uh, and then pull through and, and, and see where I get to. Inevitably, the front of the race will be going very quick. So You've got one of the most impressive looking alphas out there on the grid, haven't you? It's one of the most uh, beautiful looking cars. So uh, talk us through it a little bit. What are the uh, advantages of driving a car like this? OK, well, it's a peak alpha prepared car, as you know, for a former championship winning car. Uh, it's a 3.2 litre supercharged engine, uh, produces a fair amount of grunt with it. But also, he's taken the modifications all the way through, so the brakes are very uprated, the suspension's uprated, and uh, done a lot of work with, with the aerodynamics on it as well. So, yeah, very highly prepared car. Fantastic. So you're going to be mixing with the front. We'll see you on the podium, I'm sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see you later on. Good luck. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, James Ford, you're the closest rival to the other James Bishop, aren't you, in the championships, and it's all to play for today. Well, it, it is. Um, I've got to catch him up, really. Um, I suppose the three drop scores start to come into play now. We've only got three rounds left. Uh, from what I can work out, I probably need to gain nine points on him, which is no easy feat, especially as it's yeah, t only two points difference um, between like a first and a second or a second and a third. So if we finish uh, one after the other, well, I, I won't make enough points before the end of the season. So I need to rely on some fastest laps and pole positions. So it's going to be really tight, but um, you know, you've got to go for these things and... Uh, I'll be uh, trying my hardest. And with this sort of thing in mind, when you're bearing in mind the fact that you are, you know, you're second in the championship really and you've got all to fight for, but it's hard to make up those points. When you get behind the wheel, does it play on your mind at all? No, it's probably worse when you're sat in, in here in the assembly area. When you get out on the grid, you, you forget it all. It's all quite instinctive and you get on with it. 
So I suppose you're going to be looking to get ahead as soon as you can, get there, and then, uh, well, you're ahead anyway on the grid, aren't you, to start with? So you're going to look to maintain that lead and hopefully put some space between you. Yeah, I mean, uh, James is alongside me. Um, that you know, I don't really have any advantage apart from being on the inside here. And, uh, yeah, I'll be hoping to get a good start and try and stay in the lead, but um, I don't think it'll be that easy somehow. It's tricky, isn't it, because you've got this camber on the start here at Rockingham. So although you're in the inside... James Bishop is going to have that bigger drop, so he might be able to get more momentum going into turn one. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I mean, I've got track position, he's got the momentum for it, so uh, we'll see who gets into the corner first. It's going to be fascinating. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Louise, this is the first time we've seen you this season. Are you uh, looking up for it, looking forward to it, optimistic? First race of the year is always, uh, well, for myself, obviously, I uh, come to the championship late this year, uh, mainly due to a number of reasons. We've had mechanical problems last year, and then obviously funding is always a problem, even at this level. Um, we blew last year at Thruxton, we blew an engine on the Saturday, so a gearbox on the Saturday and on the en- Sunday the engine went, so that put us on the back foot a bit. Um, so I've put an old 8-valve engine in that I had lying around, as you do, uh, put that in and uh, got it remapped for, to use with a fuel injection and here we are. Um, qualifying went okay, we were on Toyo control tyres for those, for that, and Yesterday conditions, as, are, as you know, were a bit changeable. It was very overcast, very wet, and then someone put oil out. So uh, in, the, in the race, by which time I'd gone over to Slicks. So, yeah, um, it's a case of damage limitation today, I think, really. We're normally used to seeing you nearer the front, or at least mixing with the front runners as well. So you mm. should be up there hopefully today. Hopefully, yeah. But as I say, I've not driven the kind of anger um, in 13 months. So that obviously always takes a little bit of time to... Does it ever leave you, though? Does it ever no, it never leave you? Leaves you. you. You have to get into the zone. You get, get into the zone. And once you're in the zone and you, you, have, you get confidence in the tyres and the brakes and the handling, then it hopefully all starts to come right. But some of these e-cars, they're stupidly fast. And, you know, even though it's a, supposedly a controlled uh, class, the, the guys have, um, you know, they, they, they go for it. And... Uh, I'm not in any championship points position. I'm here for fun. I'm here to, you know, not to make up the numbers, but we're here for, for primarily for fun. Because those guys are fighting for championship points. Well, we all know you say you're here for fun, but when you get behind the wheel and all of a sudden you're, you're vying for position, fun goes out the window, doesn't it? When the red mist comes down, yes, you do. Have, you do get a little bit... Uh, yeah, you can get a bit excitable. <laughs> but other than that, yeah, we're, we're having... You know, no, at the moment, no real problems with the car. Um, it's, it's coming together nicely. You did read my mind. My next question was, how is the car behaving? Because the rumours were you might be slightly down on power. We are, yeah. So the 16-valve the engine had a bit more top-end power. This is a 8-valve, uh, but we're still running the fuel injection that we ran on the 16-valve engine, but it's been remapped. Um, but, yeah, we are down on power. There's no, no two ways about that. Listen, all the cars are starting to fire up now, so we'll let you get ready. But uh, thank you for speaking to us. It's been great. Thank you, for, thank you very much. Well, before we embark on the penultimate event of the season here at Rockium, and what an impressive lineup of cars we've got, we're going to take a look back at how we got to this stage in the season. The opening round of the championship took place at Silverstone on the national circuit with this impressive lineup of cars 22 cars taking to the grid for rounds one and two of the championship back in April. And the season is underway here at Silverstone. Guy Hale leading from Chris Snowden. Darrell Wilson in third. Ian Brookfield gets it sideways and he's facing the wrong way at Cops. Oh, just about everybody comes through unscathed. Brookfield will hopefully rejoin. But it's Hale leading. Snowden second, Wilson third. Let's look back at the very heavily subscribed Class E led at the moment by Tom Herbert. In the orange 156, car number 17, looks at the inside line there of Clive Hodgkin. He's got Steve Potts chasing him in the green car. Steve Potts in the 147-21, looks up the inside. The ex-Porsche racer has made the transition to Alpha Racing with ease. Hailed still from Snowden. And look at the battle for the Class E's. Pops on the inside. Very wide line there from Tom Herbert. A mistake going into Cops. He loses the place. In car now with Tom Eastwood. The 65 machine. And up front you can see James Bishop getting in. He's on the podium already. Up into third place in class. Pops still chasing as Clive Hodgkin takes an outside line. 
Guy Hale still in front. Chris Snowden second, Darrell Wilson third. And now up front, it's James Bishop who leads side by side for second between uh, Potts, but, oh, and going through. Chris Snowden takes the win. Guy Hale second, Ray Foley third. Another great start to race two. Roger Evans looking around the outside line of Clive Hodgkin as they go into Cops. No problems for Ian Brookfield this time. But out front, Chris Snowden leading this one at the moment from Guy Hale. Hale's looking at the inside line and slowing. The race lead is slowing. So Chris Snowden is, I don't think, going to manage a double. He's looking for the inside of the track. 53. Graham Seeger goes to the outside line and it's a retirement for Chris Snowden. His second race of the year, a win in race one, a retirement in race two. Hail from Foley and Evans. There is Ray Foley in the five car running in second position at the moment. Guy Hale chasing well. Meanwhile, Darrell Williams, non-finisher in race number one, is siding his way through the field. The Alfa Romeo GT Diesel making very light work of the opposition. Steve Potts again is impressive in the 21 car. And the two Jameses, Bishop and Ford side by side. Bishop in silver muscles his way through. He held the outside line remarkably around Brooklands. Into Luffield, inside line here. He's going to move up to second in class. Darrell Wilson goes through. Up ahead now of Tom Eastwood. He really is making great progress through the field. That car being superbly driven. Dave Messenger in 79 is behind him in the 156. But onto the last lap, chequered flag and a win for Guy Hale. Welcome back, round five of the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship. Brian Shrub's first race with us of the season. He leads a very congested track down into Coppice for the first time. This could end in tears, but thankfully doesn't as we watch John Billingsley chasing the faster class A1 car of Andy Robinson up through the mountain that's Tom Herbert following him class E honours again very hotly fought Robinson moment holding sway over Billingsley here's a class E battle Andy Inman and Andy Hancock battling hard as they go through Park Corner but the race leader Brian Shrub very much into back marker traffic. Richard Ford pulls over. Great piece of driving from Richard in the 31 car. And Brian Shrub goes into the hairpin, down towards Barn Corner. And his first outing of the season, round five of the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship, is going to result in the checker. There it is, a win for Brian Shrub. Brian Shrub looking to make it a double. Alistair Kellett is alongside. Looks like a pretty good start. Very, a very good start by Kellett. Not so good by Brian Shrub, who's in second position. Third place is Robin Air Monsor in the 75. Up into Cobbis. Cobbis, it's as crowded as it was in race one. Here we go, on board. And problems for Tom Herbert, who's on the grass. Across the track. That could have been nasty, given the tight confines here at Cadwell Park. Robin Air Mortsel up ahead of Andy Robinson. Roger McMahon in the Fiat running in the invitation class, like Alastair Kellett. Here is the battle in the E class, led by James Bishop from Steve Potts and John Billingsley. Alastair Kellett held on at the front for some time from Brian Trump, who continued to maintain the pressure. James Ford engaging in battle with a recovering. Tom Herbert, great racing between the pair up the mountain, but two out of two here at the end of the day for Brian Shrub, Alistair Kellett taking second position. The Anglesey weekend always popular, a great race venue and a great start up the inside by Andy Robinson. Robinson up into second position, coming up into the banking for the first time. And they turn in under the sunshine here. Robinson on the outside line going for the lead. But the back end's come around. He's lost it right in front of the traffic. A worrying moment for everybody. But I think 
miraculously, they're all managing to get through. Keith Waite taking a very straight on, in fact. Keith Waite very, very wide into the Rocket Complex. That's young 17-year-old Tom Hill going around the outside. His racing car debut this weekend coming in from Karts and acquitting himself absolutely superbly this weekend. So you'll notice Steve Potts racing in the black 156 now and a change of number for him after the demise of his own car earlier in the season. Great to see him still racing with the Alphas as on the last lap now, Graham Seeger comes down through the corkscrew and into the final bend to take the win. Brian Shrub will take second position. James Bishop wins Class E. Race two underway and keen to make amends for race number one. Andy Robinson very quick off the line. Robin Air Monsor in 44 goes up the inside and squeeze. It's a big squeeze. And Robinson is on the ground and back around the track. The same point. But he was lucky in race. Oh, I was going to say he was lucky in race one. Definitely not so lucky in race two. That is terminal damage, sadly, for Andy Robinson. Meanwhile, the battle very much underway. James Ford running third in the leader, leader of the red group, then the lead red car, chasing the pack up the hill. And he's trying to get another class win. It was a fifth class win of the year for James Bishop in race number one as we look at Tom Herbert coming down the spectacular corkscrew into the final corner. Andy Hancock chasing him and this is the battle for the lead in Class E again the best supported category James Bishop in front at the moment James Ford looking for his fourth win he's not far away at the moment from Bishop keeping him very honest but the race leader is again Graham Seeger who is going to take another win here by the look of it comes round the final corner James Ford has got the better of James Bishop now but it's Graham Seeger who takes the win, Brian Shrub second from Keith Waite in third place. The anti-penultimate race of the season for the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship. This is round 12 of 14, just Silverstone to go after today's round. And I can tell you that after round 11, which took place yesterday, we're filming on Sunday, Saturday's race saw an outright win for Chris Snowden, class win for James Ford, which keeps the championship alive. As we look at 65, Tom Eastwood bringing his car into line, closely followed by Andy Inman in car number 80, coming onto the grid. The class E cars will grid in their own group. Here is the grid, Chris Snowden on pole with Clive Hodgkin, Vincent Dubois and Nick Anderson row two, followed by Louise West and Ray Foley. Brian Shrupp and Malcolm Chapman row four, row five after a non-finish yesterday is Graham Seeger. On to the class E's, as you can see, this is the biggest class. James Ford on pole, James Bishop alongside the two championship contenders. Tom Herbert and Christian Leith row two, row three, John Billingsley and Andy Hancock, then Tom Eastwood and Andy Inman, Stacey Dennis and Steve O'Brien next, followed by Steve Potts and Russell Anderson, Chris Healy, David Messenger and Luther Blissett completing the grid. And a very, very impressive grid we have here at Rockingham. The modified car starting at the front. The lights are on. Oh, a little bit previous there by Nick Anderson, but he gets it all checked up. I don't think Nick's gained any advantage. He's slower off the line. Pro Rockingham probably a good job that wasn't Cadwell Park, but the rest of them make a great start. Look at Graham Seeger after he's not finished, rocketing round the outside and makes an absolutely flying start. But out front, it's Clive Hodgkin. We used to see him in a purple car. He's in the... Silver 44-156, he leads Graham Seeger from the back of the modified groups, got up into second place on the inside of Vincent Dubois. Brilliant start by Seeger, he looks like he's hungry for a race win here. Chris Snowden's there in car number 12, he's back in third position at the moment, so he's got some work to do, he's managed to get past Dubois as they go through the right-hander at Yentwood. And then into Chapman Curve, around to Piff Path. We've got our onboard camera with John Billingsley, the driver from Walder's Lady. And contact with James Ford! His hand went up there. What are you doing, mate? He says, or words to that effect. Probably a good job we haven't got the driver mic'd up. But contact between the two. 
Thoughts on the inside. Has there been contact with Tom Herbert as well, who got it all sideways? The back end was coming around, but he collected it all up. Christian Leeds following. Now, what's happened? And James Ford's got a problem. That could be game over in the championship. James Ford in the 23 car, the Lincolnshire base man, the reigning Class E champion has gone wide. I don't know at the moment if he's gone into retirement. We can't see as Christian Leith, the Scotsman, you can probably tell that by the livery on the car, the saltire emblazoned on the side. And here's Andy Hancock in car number 18. Goodness me, drama on the first lap of round 12 of the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship. It looks as, as uh, Andy goes along school straight as if the championship could well be going to James Bishop here the car's coming into the Brook S's for the first time a variety of lines we've got um, somebody pulling into pit lane I think ultimately into retirement there's Luther Blissett in the green 48 the uh, ex-pro footballer and uh, good to see Luther enjoying his racing Rockingham a superb place to come and watch this is the only anti-clockwise circuit you'll see the cars racing on in the UK Russell Anderson uh, making some progress there Russell in his 146 and that's Steve Potts he's had some rotten luck so far this year so Steve Potts is out of the race and James Ford looks like it's game over for him he's crossed the line he's got a lap under his belt but James Ford that's the championship over well, sadly, James Ford out of the race. So on the drop score scenario, James Bishop will go to Silverstone. He'll go away from Rockingham, a very happy man, having secured the championship. Because if he non-finishes here, that will become a drop score. He won't have to worry about it. So I'm not sure whether he knows that that's the case at the moment. So we'll keep our eyes out. The silver 95 car there in the mix. Down behind John Billingsley. Billingsley in green, then James Bishop. Tom Herbert is up front at the moment. So Herbert goes into Tarzan, the hairpin. Christian Leith coming under pressure from Andy Hancock. Down behind them, Dave Messenger's made great progress. Didn't race yesterday, new engine in the car and some onboard footage along school straight. He's going to have a look down the inside. No, he isn't as they go into the Brook S's. So he started right at the very back of the grid and he's overtaken a fair number of cars already and he's teeing up Andy Hancock another Kent based driver comes from Chatham in the number 18 car but this is the Class E battle coming along the straight into Turn 1 as you'll note here at Rockingham no runoff areas for Turn 1 you get it wrong you spank the wall on the outside and that can cause damage to car and driver look how close they're getting to the wall as well as we go in car with John Billingsley John working hard. Nice bit of sound there, listening to the engine note as he went through the Dean hairpin. He's now coming down into Yentwood. Billingsley second in class. James Bishop, champion elect, is in third place. Into Chapman Curve, back in car with Billingsley. Is he going to be able to get a class win here? Billingsley cer certainly working hard, but at the moment. It's Tom Herbert who could well be on for the class win. Took his first win of the season at Donington Park earlier on in the year. Join us after the break for more. A very warm welcome back to Rockingham round 12 of the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship. James Bishop. At Graceland's takes second position in Class E ahead of John Billingsley. Great move there by Bishop. Now he won't know that his arch rival for the championship, James Ford, is in the pit lane. Well, we're speculating that he doesn't know. It's a long way from the racetrack to look across into pit lane. Very difficult to pick up pit signals, let alone see who's in the garages or who's retired. So Bishop is just racing as hard as he knows how he's had a great season so far and uh, he'll wrap up the championship in this one he's certainly running well there meanwhile is Graham Seeger in 53 up into second now 
is Chris Snowden, the overall race leader, Clive Hodgkin, as you can see in the silver 156 with the yellow wheels. Graham Seeger in 53 is working hard. Seeger we saw taking two wins at Anglesey where he was unbeaten. He also took a win at Alton Park on the 31st of May in round five of the championship. He's had four retirements so far this year. So he'll be pleased to maybe grab an overall win here. Certainly looks as if he might be on and challenging for the Class A1 win. Clive Hodgkin leading that at the moment as we go down the order and pick up Vincent Dubois in car number 88. Vincent challenging Graham Seeger with Brian Shrub in the orange 33 running in class A2. The uh, A, B and C classes all running in their own respective grids now. And the class E boys and girls or are appropriate getting the uh, chance to sort their own battles out within their own grid um, which I think has been a popular measure um, organised by the club here because it makes a straight fight of that championship and I know that uh, the organisers will be very oh problems there for Malcolm Chapman in the Alpha 75 on lap 4 of the race so he will join Andy Inman James Ford and Steve Potts in retirement. Problems there for Clive Hodgkin and through into the lead goes Chris Snowden. Chris Snowden is through into the lead. So the number 12 car. This is uh, Chris's second meeting of the year. We saw him win the opener at Silverstone and those of you with long memories may well recall him retiring in the early stages of race two. The Alpha 33 certainly doesn't seem to be missing a beat at the moment as we go back down into the Class E's. And great for the championship this year that the Class E's, which is the standard class effectively, it's the, the entry-level class that it's produced the overall champion. And I think that really pays testament to the point structure of the championship as we look at the man who's going to claim that crown, the 95 car of James Bishop in front of him the orange car of Tom Herbert who is still out front Tom who comes from Copthorne I can never remember whether Copthorne Surrey or Sussex but it's down near Gatwick Airport I think there was some dispute over the years whether Gatwick itself was uh, in Surrey or Sussex but down that way and uh, he is leading class at the moment as we go back to Clive Hodgkin in second position. Graham Seeger trying to close in. So it's Chris Snowden out front. And the uh, the two cars we're looking at here battling for Class A1 honours. Championship-wise, Graham Seeger's already sewn up Class A, head of Vincent Dubois, with Clive Hodgkin in third, head of Andy Robinson. Class A2, Nick Anderson is ahead of Brian Shrub. Chris Snowden in third position in the standings. Class B, Darrell Wilson, we haven't seen him for a bit. From Clive Hodgkin and Robin Air Mortsell. And Class C, Roger Evans from Ray Foley as we go in car with Andy Hancock, who's working hard and chasing Dave Messenger at the moment. Now, Dave Messenger's come through. He's come through right the way from the back of the grid after a non-finish or well, in fact a non-start yesterday and Andy looks around the outside we've got Christian Leith up in front as well this just goes to show you how very keenly fought class he is Graham Seeger very hard on the brakes into the Brook S's and he's piling the pressure on Clive Hodgkin these two this is a great battle for class A1 and again, you've seen the battles in Class E. We get them in the modified classes as well. And Seeger's having a look. He's come offline. He's got a better run. Oh, and contact as they go into Turn 1. I'm sure that was unintentional, but Seeger bashes across, takes second position from Clive Hodgkin, and there's going to be some panel damage there. Dave Bessinger past Christian Leith in the 22 car, the scalloway based driver. He's passed by Dave Messenger. Andy Hancock wants to get involved as well. Coming through Graceland, it goes off camber on the outside there. Leith held on to it well. Messenger's teeing up for an inside run into Tarzan, the corner named after the 
similar corner of the Zandvoort former Grand Prix circuit but Leith gets across he's lost the place to Messenger but he's defending well from Hancock and here's the the view back from Dave Messenger's car Christian Leith on the outside line here that's going to be the outside into the Brook S's Andy Hancock coming up as well Messenger very late a little bit messy there I'm sure he won't mind me saying that coming out of turn four and back onto the straight but Hancock look at this wide line and he's going to get a good run out of turn four and try and take the position away from Christian Leith they are side by side well Leith's held on very well here held his nerve on the inside got the run into turn one hangs on to position Andy Hancock is going to have to carry on chasing Christian Leith got to deal with some slower cars sharing the track time as well here as they go up into the Dean hairpin remarkable we didn't get an awful amount of contact at Dean on lap one because you get cars going three four wide around turn one they all have to filter themselves out into effectively single file at Dean you might get the odd side by side and here's the race leader Chris Snowden fastest man on track best lap so far one minute 41.4 well over 70 miles an hour, averaging almost up to 75. Look how close he gets to the wall. You could be in America, couldn't you, going around the oval? Absolutely fantastic shot from the race leader. Back to Christian Lee. Lost a little bit of ground, a lot of ground now. To Dave Messenger. So Andy Hancock still piling that pressure on in the uh, 156. And this is for fifth in Class E at the moment. Hancock looks at the outside line coming up into Chapman. Might go possibly for the cutback. Big problem, that's coming out of Tarzan. He's got the inside line coming out of Tarzan, but that converts to the outside line for the Brook S's. And if possible, if you can hang on the outside there, it's doable for the second part of the S's. But he's a little bit too far back. He's just going to have to try and mount the pressure. He might be better off saving the momentum for a run out of turn four along the straight into turn one. But Leith proved that he was quicker on this part of the circuit a few laps ago. Messenger's ahead of him. He goes through and uh, is still running well. Incidentally, it's still Tom Herbert leading class here at the moment ahead of James Bishop. John Billingsley, you can just see in the distance in the all-green car, is running third place in class at the moment. So John could be on for a podium. And here we go, in car once again with Andy Hancock trying all that he knows to get on terms. Andy fifth in the championship at the moment. And he is 14 points clear of Christian Lee. So this is very much a, a battle of honour between the two men who are effectively fighting over fifth place in the championship. John Billingsley six in Class E, Dave Messenger in eight. So Messenger sending a message to those guys that he's capable of of doing well now the faster cars get get stuck into back marker traffic there's russell anderson in the yellow 46 and you saw graham seager and also clive hodgkin going through with uh, brian shrub in the mix as well russell anderson 146 comes from harlow Uh, has done several rounds raced at uh, Silverstone Donington Park the uh, single header at Snetterton and back with us again at Rockingham as we again look to the battle for second position Clive Hodgkin still chasing Graham Seeger and Seeger not getting away in the peak alpha car at the moment so this is um, good stuff from Clive Hodgkin the car hasn't given up the ghost at all yet he held second position earlier on Chris Snowden goes through. Snowden's lead here is not actually getting any bigger. Fastest lap in class A1 has gone to Vincent Dubois, who's running there in the, the, the second of the silver cars. Vincent's best lap time, 1 minute 42.6, back on lap two. So Vincent running well, he's in class A1. Brian Shrub and Chris Snowden in class A2, and we go back with Andy Hancock who's having a super race here he's tried to reel in Christian Leaf, but at the moment not having a lot of luck in doing so back to the second place car 
and indeed the third and fourth place cars. This is very close out for racing. The modified classes always give us some good racing as well. And it's nice to have the time to look at the scraps that are going on. So it's Seeger from Hodgkin, Dubois, and then Brian Shrub, who's getting closer. So are we going to see Brian Shrub's class A2 car go past Vincent Dubois shortly? He certainly seems to be mounting a little bit of a momentum for an attack. Here is the champion elect, James Bishop. He's got a little bit of work to do to, to uh, catch up with Tom Herbert. James Bishop has had five class wins so far this year as we go back to the battle for second position overall and indeed the scrap for Class A1 honours here at Rockingham. It's been a fascinating race that we've had so far and on to the last lap in the lead goes Chris Snowden. Join us after the break for the conclusion. Welcome back to the penultimate race of the BRSCC Alpha Shop Alpha Romeo Championship. And it's Chris Snowden who is leading this one. It's Steve O'Brien that he's coming up to lap. O'Brien joining Class E for this year, raced in the invitation class last year. And he um, takes a wide line, perhaps not wide enough, into Tarzan. I think he's going to be passed by the race leader, Chris Snowden, who goes along school straight. So it makes the pass. It's Graham Seeger still running in third place. But here is Chris Snowden, who's going to take his third win of the year. Up ahead of him is Tom Eastwood in 65. He's eighth in Class E. Steve O'Brien is ninth. But a great drive here by Chris Snowden, who's slowing down. Steve O'Brien's going Steve to unlap himself. And Chris Snowden knows that he's got a good margin of victory which at the flag is as Graham Seeger crosses the line 1.936 Clive Hodgkin third Brian Shrub is next a little bit of a wait we should see Vincent Dubois coming round well it's Stacey Dennis next here comes Stacey one of our two lady racers out of turn four Stacey's going to secure 10th position in class E a little bit of a gap back here's Vincent Dubois third in class A one fifth overall and he takes the chequered flag and then next up we've got Russell Anderson and Luther Blissett 11th and 12th in Class E but flashing his lights to the race fans here and the marshals and officials at Rockingham is Chris Snowden so Chris taking a splendid win here at Rockingham so here's how they finish Snowden wins and takes A2, Graham Seeger second, he wins class A1 from Clive Hodgkin, Brian Shrub, Vincent Dubois, Ray Foley wins class C, then Tom Herbert, James Bishop, the new champion, eighth from Louise West, then John Billingsley in tenth, then it's Andy Hancock, Dave Messenger, Chris Healy, 13th from Christian Lee, Tom Eastwood, Steve O'Brien, Stacey Dennis, Russell Anderson and Luther Blissett. Chris, when you look at the stats, you started first, you finished first. The uh, the record is that was that was easy, wasn't it? It was the same story. It, well, yeah, you would yeah you'd have to see the in car footage. But, um, we got jumped at the start. I went down to I think fourth. In fact, I, in fairness, I actually wasn't thinking that I was actually going to lead the race because um, the guys around here are, are quicker than I am, and I thought. I'll stay with them for a while and um, fortunately you have to use your brakes around here quite a lot and we've done a bit of work on the brakes this weekend and they're, they're working quite well. Um, the uh, Clive had a problem with his brakes and so did Ian um, but it was, it was fantastic, it was really worth, you know, yesterday we had a good win, hard fight and today it wasn't, it looked easy at the end but it certainly wasn't at the beginning. It's one of those races or one of those circuits where you get pushed the whole time and one little mistake and that means your race is over. Absolutely, completely. I mean, I did, I did, I think, a four second slower lap in the middle when I was involved with some um, of the guys that were having the race in the um, smaller cars. Mm -hmm. And um, they fell for me right yesterday, but they didn't fall for me right at all today. And then I saw Ian and a couple coming back at me and they had their lights on and I thought, here they come. But fortunately, they didn't get me. Graham, we spoke to you before the race and you said you weren't quite sure how it was going to pan out. It turned out it went quite nicely for you. It did, uh, yeah. It uh, didn't quite make the top spot, obviously, but uh, second, second was good and that's first in class. 
Um, so yeah, I, I had a fairly good start, which which is unusual. There's an awful lot to, to get this car off the line. So yeah, I had a good good start and a good run through through the traffic down to the first bend. Had then a right monster battle with Clive, who who's brilliant driver, well experienced driver in a very quick car. Um, and then after a slight coming together, we then settled down again and I eventually got past him. And um, in fact, very scary coming together. Um, so yeah, we, we, we got through and I got through up to second. So yeah. You say it's tricky to get the car off the line. What is particularly tricky with this car? It, it's front wheel drive with, uh, some would say, more power than should ever go through a front wheel drive car. And obviously the slicks are still quite cool at that time. And, uh, and you're trying to feed the clutch and, and get off the line with, with an awful lot of power. So do you find the car bogs down or is it just getting no traction? You just no traction, yeah. You, you, you light up the tyres too easily, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you don't have to kind of find a way of easing off, I suppose. Yeah, well, the temptation is to want to go, but actually you just got to let nature take its course, sort of thing. No, it's a fantastic car. It was a great race. And I'm pleased to have spoken to you as well, because earlier on, I didn't think you were that confident. Well, no, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of quick cars out here, and it's a good championship, and, uh, you know, anybody on the day can win. The circuit's got some unique features, uh, obviously the long banked bit that we go on. But then it's very, very bumpy as well, uh, and we run quite a hard setup with a, with a big V6 engine in the front, so it doesn't like the bumpiness at all. It's probably one of the hardest uh, circuits to set a car up for because you've got the banking, because you've got the, the very flat section as well that is quite windy and quick. Yeah, it's definitely a track of two halves, and, uh, and that's where it lends itself to two things like the 33 because they're very, very quick around the infield track. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting track. I enjoy it here. Great to chat to you and well done. Thank you. Thank you. Right, Clive, uh, a bit of a race for you out there with Graham ahead of you. It was a battle, wasn't it? It was a total battle. Uh, Chris Snowden and I yesterday had a fantastic race. Our cars are the most opposite in the, in the paddock. One's lighter than the heaviest. And uh, today I hoped it was going to carry on, but um, he got by me quicker. And then Graham came by and then I did all, my, all the tricks trying to stop him. But uh, it was great, it was great. It's a fantastic championship and it, it's just great fun out there. I was going to say, the variety of the different cars that were in the, in the championships, the different classes there, does always bring up quite a lot of exciting yes. racing, doesn't it? Yes, you never know what you're going to come up to next. Uh, they're so different and uh, they handle different, brake differently. And it's just a joy sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And would you have taken second in class? Oh, yes. I thought I was going to be around fifth when I came here in the, in, in the weekend, so I'm very, very happy, thank you. <laughs> like, so there's a lot of variety out there, but to finish third on road as well, that's on track, it's a, it's a nice place to be for you. Yes, it is, yes, yes. The car's not, not it's a, somebody's track day car, to be honest. I've not done much to it yet, so we will develop it and get on to them. <laughs> well, well done, it was a great race. Thank you. Thank you. Well, James, amazing. We spoke to you before and you thought you might not be the champion this weekend, but you are. Well done. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's been a fantastic year and uh, we've done it, so chuffed a bit. Yeah, you were hoping to have it wrapped up by uh, next race and you can now go there and just relax. Yeah, we can enjoy Silverstone now, a doubleheader, our, our home circuit, so uh, party all round. How much of you are looking at the next race weekend before we can come back to this race, though? How much of you is thinking, I will take it easy, or is it that then the red mist will descend? And you, you have to go for it, you know, when you're a racing driver, as soon as you put the helmet on, you try and win and anybody who tells you different is lying, you have, to, uh, you have to go for it 100%, otherwise that's when mistakes happen, so we just went for it, we came second today, which is great, and now we can enjoy the next one. Race strategy then, what was your aim for this race? I knew you were just trying to finish ahead of other James, weren't you? Yeah, that's it, as simple, as, simple as that, either James, James had to win the race, um, but other than that, if we finished ahead of him, then that was job done anyway, so uh, finish ahead of him, that was it. It was a very clean race considering everything that you had uh, at stake, really. Yeah, I mean, it, nine times out of ten when we're out up the front, we tend to stay clear of most of the, the drama. But, um, yeah, I mean, me and Tom, we had a little battle uh, for a couple of laps, but uh, it wasn't worth risking it after only James had gone off. So, yeah. Absolutely. This is a case of, uh, I suppose, not doing anything stupid, but also not celebrating too early there. You know you won quite early on, and then all of a sudden you had to carry on racing. Yeah, James, I saw James go off on, so I think, the first lap. So I was sort of just thinking that if I was out in front on my own, I'd probably be binning it. So uh, it was quite glad that Tom was there to keep me focused. Well done. Championship and race, that's brilliant. Well done. Second today, but overall the champion. Thank you. Well done. Well, Tom, while James 1 and James 2 were having a fight, you just snuck in there. Yeah, luckily I got a really good start. A um, couple of guys got in front of me. I didn't expect in the first corner, but I don't know what happened to the two James. But yeah, I just had a really good start. It was a fantastic race, a fantastic circuit. I mean, the Alphas always throw up great races, don't they? 
Yeah, I, do. I, I love it to bits. There's no, I don't think you'll go anywhere else where you have competitiveness like it. It is always someone to fight on track. And with this circuit itself, what particular parts are your highlights and your least favourite areas? Um, I love all the circuits, to be honest. It is my favourite circuit. I've always liked a circuit. Um, I did a track day, I think, when I was about 19. Loved it ever since. I always go well here. I don't dislike any of it. Perfect. I'd like to hear it. And about the car, how's the car been behaving this weekend? Uh, race one wasn't great. It was quite underpowered. Uh, but luckily, we got that sorted for race two. Run perfect. Couldn't have asked for it to go any better, really. Fantastic. Well, well done. Great race win. Congratulations. Thank you very much. John, when we talk to drivers at the end, we always say to them, you know, you started off in a position and you climbed a few places, and that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, forward, forward facing in the first corner is always good. Fifth to third. Happy? Yeah. Um, car was good. Tyres went off a bit on the sort of third, fourth lap. Um, and then I couldn't hold the pace, really, in the other two. How noticeable is it out on a circuit like this when your tyres do suddenly uh, give up on you slightly? Mainly in these cars, it's, it's understeer, so um, you just go through a corner rather than round it. Mm. Anything on the banking particularly, because it's got the, the camber that you're not normally in, coming to counter with? Banking's pretty good because it sort of hugs you round and, and takes the car around with you. It's more on the, the infield that, that you find the difficulties come with the tyres. Uh, so you had a few issues, but you still managed to, to finish third overall, so you've got to be ecstatic, really, I suppose, of your performance. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. Um, Start, started in, in fifth, as you said. I was first for the first lap, and as I said, I couldn't, couldn't hold the pace, so um, tyres let me down, but I'm, I'm pleased. It was a great race, well done. It was, thank you. Well, following on from Rockingham at Silverstone, Ian Staple took one race one from Graham Seeger and Darrell Wilson. Anthony George won race two, but it was a double for the new champion, James Bishop, in Class E. The final table looks like this. James Bishop champion, James Ford second, Graham Seeger in third ahead of Tom Herbert. Steve Potts in fifth ahead of the joint sixth place, Ray Foley and Nick Anderson. Brian Shrub next from Roger Evans and Andy Hancock. Well, that's it for another weekend of fantastic racing. We'll see you next time on Last Lap. Our next programme sees us going back to Pembrey, the Welsh Motorsport Centre, for another helping of Pocket Rocket Racing, the National Legends cars, their penultimate event of the season. Join us then. <laughs>